Chris Curtis is many things. Uh, meteorologist, uh, hockey guy, uh, pessimist, but he's not a music guy. However, that right there, Ken Casey, who is with us in the studio right now, is one of Chris Curtis's favorite songs. I was it listening not. it around Castle Island yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Great. I was, un I was uncomfortable to listen to that much of the song on a, <laughs> on a sports radio station. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking about all the people driving their car. Go, what? Oh, the? They love it. They I don't know if this is a <laughs> sports it. radio station. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, true. that's true. That's true. Uh, well, no, I, I, would, I would say that you could argue that there is no band that can claim more of their songs have been have been played at pivotal moments in the sports history of this city than Dropkick Murphys, your band. Yeah, right? I'm right up there with Dancing With Myself. <laughs> yeah, I think it's called Dancing On My Own. <laughs> that works. You can do a remix. I mean, Greg, you can How make... do you feel about that? that he, that's, uh, he, uh, that can that's, we talk? He said... Huh? Can we talk about your offer? Yeah, so I, here's my thing. is I would like I would like there to be a new... I like the current version of Dancing on my own. Uh -huh. I, I like it. I'm okay with it. Um, but if the Red Sox are going to stick to it, mm -hmm. uh, as we've heard, I would like there to be other versions of it that, okay. that, that they could use uh, at Fenway that, 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 that others could use. So Kenny and I were on the phone the other day. I said, hey... Uh, maybe why don't you do a cover of that so that we have a version that that people who don't necessarily like the Caleb, what's his name? Caleb, Caleb Callum, Scott. what's his name? Callum, Callum Scott. Scott. Callum Scott, his mm -hmm. version. Yeah. And you were not into that. Well, I just said it's cool that they had uh, that song. It was great that they had that song last year. And what did they end up with that song? 0-1? Uh, <laughs> and, 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 the last oh. time, and the last time they had a song... <laughs> That they asked someone to do, yeah. they broke the curse. I forget who the band was. <laughs> yes, that's true now listen, Tessie. listen, listen. I, listen, I, listen yeah. I can. I'll admit something on the radio. Yeah, I'm not even a fan of Tessie as a song. Listen, they gave us a friggin' melody from like 1909 and said, "Can you make a song out of this?" Right? What the hell? You know, the only reason we said yes is because it actually was in the key of B flat, which is the bagpipes. We said that's a sign. Mm -hmm. However. I mean, if you're going to talk about breaking the curse, I mean, I have the newspaper article from July 23rd, 2004, day before we debuted Tessie on the field during the game with the fight with A-Rod and Veritech and the walk-off by Bill Miller. And I said, I guarantee a World Series with this song. Totally talking out my ass. Right. Right? I didn't believe it, but I got it in the it. paper. <laughs> but but my point it. is, of course – we could use a new and better song, but no other song has the history like like Tessie had. Well, yeah, I certainly not Caleb Scott's <laughs> "Dance with Myself." Yeah, Greg says, know. "Greg says you want to do this song," and I listened to it. And then when I woke up from the nap, I was like, "Wow, that really gets the blood blood yeah. pumping." No, but I mean, the guy can sing for a thousand times better than I am. I'm, I'm hoping they get rid of "Sweet Caroline." Let's oh, just, dude, please! You know what? When that. I travel around the country. Like in the burn from like particularly Yankees fans when like you know we're back and forth and it's, you know I'm holding my own and they're giving back and you know all their rings and this and that and then they're like yeah dude just shut up and sing Sweet Caroline and yeah. I'm just like I have no I, reply. Know, I have I'm, no rebuttal for not, that you know I've wondered why that hasn't gone away like are there people that no really, now it's I huge like and, it, now so. it's huge in British uh, like. British boxing, all this mm. stuff, they all use it the same really? way. Yeah, it's a big, come a big, big thing. You like it? I like it still, yeah. It makes yeah, me feel she, something. I feel something. Yes, yeah, I felt something when he played me that Caleb Scott song, too. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I needed a nap. Hey, Greg, by the way, yes. the Dropkick song that has the greatest, um, I would say, the song that was best amplified a Boston moment over the course of a single player's career is without question the Papelbon shipping up to Boston at Fenway. 100%. Like the second you'd hear the start of that song, yeah. the bullpen door would open and the park would just explode. You know what sucked about that for me, though, as a season ticket holder at the time, and obviously the close is coming in, you know, we got the lead, we want to shut the game. Then you, he'd open the door and, and I'd want it like, like any fan, like, yeah, clapping. <laughs> and then, darn it, let's start. And I'm like, I can't clap to my own song. <laughs> Someone's gonna get me on video and be like, "Look at this guy rocking out to his own music." You know? The BC cheerleading program has a dance that they've had for years to that song. Ooh, I yep. like that. I still remember it to this day. Wow. It's a dance that will never leave me. But we ha we have had good luck, obviously, with the music. Like uh, when we when we released uh, 
couple of albums ago and the song boys are back uh came out it was the day it was the album came out the day the nhl lockout ended so every rink used that song mm -hmm. you yeah. know so we've definitely had some good crossover with uh with sports and stuff um so but, you guys are back out on the road how like how weird was it to not be out on the road for a couple of years yeah it was it was you know, I mean, we all, I love what we get to do and, you know, seeing the world. I mean, we still haven't been able to go internationally, which is, you know, Europe is our biggest market. So to not go there has been really tough. But, man, I, I always appreciate what we get to do. But, like, when you get it pulled out from under, you know, under and you can't do it, it's like you get a whole new appreciation, you know, for how much you miss it. And we did a few shows in late august september all outside and there was still this vibe in the air even then that was just like ah, should we be here should we not but like the shows now people are just like it's back screw it they're back, back. Right. i'm going everybody's out back. You know yeah I mean? no yeah. i think that's good i think yeah, i think i think everybody's back so last night house of blues and then back tonight and tonight tomorrow. tonight and tomorrow night tonight house and of tomorrow. blues and okay. then uh roadrunner uh sunday night roadrunner is the new venue yep, right yep. right over here correct uh and are there you still have tickets yeah there's there's still tickets I think there's like 500 tickets left for, for Sunday show. night. All Sunday right, so night, if you yeah. want to go see Dropkicks. Now, Wiggy, you have five questions because well, you're, you're fascinated by rock stars. Is yeah, yeah. I'm, I, musicians and actors really uh, you fascinate know, you. Yeah, I watch a show called Unsung. It talks a lot about musicians. So I am fascinated with just the lifestyle. We, we had this discussion um, being an athlete versus a musician. What was the question you asked, Greg, about that? What, about whether or not it's uh, in your genes or like... Or is it harder to be a professional athlete or a musician? Yeah, I think the, that... Yeah, 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 and yeah. I said that I think it's the musician. Well, anyways, here's one of my questions. My wife is a diehard fan of yours. She actually loves shipping up to Boston. She sings it. She's got a pretty good voice. Not, Wait, you, she sings it? Oh, yeah, oh. when it comes on, her and... Her Tamina and my, is a singer? Well, her and my youngest son, they, they sing it on the way when they drive to school you know so it's this hype song to get him <laughs> go to school what was the um like for that song like what was the the inspiration behind it what what made what made y'all come up with that song that ultimately i think it's become like our anthem as bostonians sure well there's a great backstory to that we had written the the music and we don't typically write like music first and have a song that's just the music it's usually either i'll like come up with the lyrics and the melody first and take it to the band and we'll create the music or it'll be hand in hand but that song we had the whole entire song done musically and um the lyrics are actually woody guthrie one of the female best american songwriters there ever was and his daughter nora uh was as a fan of the band and she contacted us and said um you know hey i, I feel like my dad and you guys are kindred spirits and um I'd like you to come down to his archives and look through the the hundreds and hundreds of pages of lyrics he has that he never put to music. Because obviously in the 1940s, you come up with a melody, you could write the lyrics down. You don't have an iPhone or something right, where you know, know traveling. So yeah, yeah, so he has a lot of songs he never recorded. So I go down and and now it's all on computer and microphone. You can't even touch it. But I went into this pressure treated room you know, holding these pieces of paper that were written in the 40s. And it was really cool. Woody Guthrie would always write a note, like he'd write the date and where he was and a little like history about where he was in the country when he came up with the song. So I'm looking through all these like deep songs. He, he writes all these songs about like Hitler and fighting fascism. And then he writes all these, you know, great songs like This Land Is Your Land. And then all of a sudden I see this song shipping up to boston there's barely any words i was like what am i getting pranked right now <laughs> no, but, but someone was, but, slipped this in but it was legitimately called shipping up to boston yeah yeah and yeah. and it was literally like the minute i read the word i'm like oh this this goes in that song and yeah. it just so it's kind of funny that that that's how that came about and um we're actually um going to tulsa where guthrie was from and recording a whole album of his uh like doing an acoustic album we're recording in april of all songs it, it's it and the songs the lyrics cause we chose a lot of his like more like scrappy songs and um the lyrics are pretty eerie as a boat it was like you know written around world war ii time and it's kind of pretty eerie how relevant what, it is to relevant today to yeah. what's going on mm -hmm. today yeah uh, curtis is right though i think there's no song you think of another song that's that would be more associated 
with the with the success that the city's had sports wise over well, the last dirty water years. but they're not even from here yeah, yeah i mean i don't even think of no, the standells no. and dirty water I, we, I we, we did we did a red sox thing with the standells and you know the you know how they're old now and stuff good guys <laughs> yeah. but they came so in there I, they're I, all I, but, I, they're I, all butthurt that there was like another <laughs> band that was like moving in on this scene you know <laughs> they were like yep. giving us dirty looks and stuff <laughs> It was funny. Uh, all right, oh, Wiggy, uh, you got another So one. I tripped one of them. Yeah, broke, no. He broke a hip. <laughs> <laughs> another thing that we were talking about that I always, because I, like, I, I think the, the mind of a musician is fascinating, right? I think it's. You don't want to know what's in this mind. Well, no, I, you know what, what, as a fan of hip hop and, you know, when you, when you see people, you know, I was a huge Biggie fan and when you see people write lyrics about whether it's what they're coming up with and, and creating songs, you talk about shipping up to Boston, how this guy, you know, writes a song and there's other songs that you're going to record. Now, you've wrote several songs. What's that process like? Is it just like things that have happened daily in your life or is it like some situations that you might see of people you know in your community and you go, you know what, I think this was a, would be a great song. And then how does that process kind of work? So I, I typically don't write songs about like something I read in the paper or mm -hmm. something, you know, it's usually something that's a little closer, whether it's friends, family, personal experiences. Um, and sometimes it's a labor of like taking notes and you're struggling to like come up with the next verse of the chorus. And sometimes the song that you played at the intro, Rose Tattoo, um, which is about like the, the, the story that, that the tattoos on my body tell about my life and moments in your life and stuff. Uh, I literally, we were in the studio recording an album and I went home one night and typically we, we have the album done before we go in to record. Some bands like go in there and they're paying for the studio and they're trying to create and we don't have enough money to do that. So, <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> and I came in the next day and I was like, Hey, something popped into my mind, start to finish whole song, record it the next day. And it's, you know, I, and I think it's, um, might have at least the video has like more views than shipping up to Boston and it's never been in a commercial TV never play I mm -hmm. think you might be that might have been the first time it was ever played on the radio so it's kind of interesting you have shipping up to Boston you know in the departed affiliated with the Red Sox and then you, and you know had all those avenues and then you ha have this other song that was written overnight last minute mm -hmm. never had any commercial attention and it's hand in hand we're shipping up to boston yeah. so it's not i guess not a formula like mm -hmm. that but sometimes some of some of our songs have taken me a year to write you come back to them you go and some of them have happened in 24 hours and so. is, is that scene in the departed is that the one where they're going over the bridge is that yeah. when that starts it's it's play, he's like call it's, call off the tail yeah, yeah but yes. it, it's also it's in the opening credits and then they come back to it yeah so is it the it, so is it sometimes instrumental first and then it's like, all right, we have this instrumentals. Now let's see what song fits. Or is it sometimes lyrics? And then how do we put the instrumentals over? Yeah, for us, it's usually lyrics and vocal melody and then the okay. instruments. Shipping Up to Boston is one of the rare ones where the music was written first. When it, when it comes to movies, how does that work with a movie? Do they come to you and say, we'd like to use your song? Do you have to? Do you ever ask, like, what's the scene? Do you want to know no, that? No, they will tell you to screw if you ask that. <laughs> uh, and when, unfortunately, we don't have too much experience in movies, but the one we do, it was a good one. Uh, but, you know, it was funny because it was a bunch of my friends had small bit pots in the pot and they're all like dude my talk to marty he's gonna get a song in i'm like oh so then all of a sudden and what happens when a movie wants to use your song is they clear the music they they get the rights but they never say you're in though they might be clearing 10 songs and then they you know put it in and try it out and see how it feels at the scene so when a when a movie calls you and says we want to use your song you're like awesome and then it half the time they don't <laughs> yeah, you're like, so, oh. yeah, yeah. but when the departed came out of course, all my friends were taking credit for getting me in the movie. And then uh, I read an interview and Robbie Robertson from the band uh, does all Scorsese scores. Mm -hmm. and, and I read this interview and Scorsese says, when Robbie Robertson brought me the song and I'm like, son of a bitch, those oh guys God. all told me they got me in. <laughs> so it was Robbie oh, Robertson. That's great. Which, which that's is, great. speaking of Robbie Robertson and the band, I just watched that. Have you guys watched that Rick James documentary it's on like showtime no. or hbo no blew my mind mm. he went up to toronto during vietnam and he was you know and it was when like the dylan kind of folk scene and all that stuff was going on and uh he joined 
Uh, he was gonna. Um, the band was. It was like Joe Hawkins in the band or something. And and before they went out on their own and then opened, you know, with Dylan's oh, backing Dylan, yeah. band. And someone was starting a fight with um, with Rick James, and the band came and beat the guys up. Invited them to the show. He started a band with them, and he has like his first band was with those guys. Really? In a, like a <laughs> folk rock band. <laughs> I was like. Wow! Yes. Yeah. No. It's cool. You know, and this is my problem. My last question, because it, it, it's you know, when you think about like inspire, you have a unique sound, and you, you see a lot of artists like you know they say, all right, this inspired me, this group or or that group. Like, what was what was you guys' inspiration for your specific music, your specific sound? Was there like you know, there's a, a group that you looked and go, oh, we like what they do, or is this something just completely unique? Uh, I would say if I had to narrow it to two bands, I would say The Clash, who was, you know, late 70s uh, British punk, and, and then The Pogues, who were like also kind of London punks, yeah. but of Irish roots that took all the Irish music that I thought wasn't cool as a kid, that I thought was like my grandparents' music, and then they made it like for my generation, and the two of those meld. Was, so it was kind of like, I always would say like the Pogues were like a traditional Irish band with a punk rock attitude, and we wanted to be like a punk rock band that in, in, took the Irish instrumentation and influence into the music. All right, uh, being the Boston sports fan that you are, uh, before you go, first, uh, to, next team to win a championship. Well, I'm going to have to say the Bruins because that's the next playoffs coming up. All right, and, uh, okay. You know, and we're looking, we're on a roll. All right, and, all right. Uh, You're confident you know, about this Bruins Well, team? you know, the thing is with with, with, a, with the Stanley Cup run, it's all about injuries and getting hot at the right time. I wish we were in the playoffs right now the way they had been playing. And um, But, yeah, I'm confident. I mean, you know. All right. I'm talking trash again, but I mean, <laughs> I'll be able to come back and say, I said it on the real man show. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, tickets tonight. There's uh, none available tonight, no. none available tomorrow, but there are some for Sunday at Roadrunner. Sunday, Runner. yeah, Roadrunner. Brand right. new venue, and uh, I've been in it. I think, you know, the House of Blues show sold out in like five minutes, and the Roadrunner show has been a little like, I think people are like, well, what is it? Where is this? What's Roadrunner? But it's awesome. Okay. Largest... Uh, indoor GA venue in New England, and people are going to be blown away. It's like a big venue, but feels small, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It's All a, right. And are you doing a cover of "Dancing on My Own" for me <clears> or not? Uh, yeah, I'm going to sing it a cappella right now. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, can I ask one more question before okay. it goes? So, uh, yeah. Okay. Last one. If you could only do one cover, because we 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 talk about cover songs, what song would that be? You mean that he wants to do? Cause... Like, if he could only, like, do one cover, like, any other song that he wanted. I know he said Rick James, if he wanted. You mean that we haven't covered Yeah, like, uh, if yet? you haven't, oh, if you wanted geez. a cover, Super, Super Freak. Super Freak, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I don't play bass anymore, uh -huh. though, I just sing, but if, if we're doing Super Freak, yeah, I'm picking that bass up again, baby. <laughs> you should do it. All right, good. Well, um, great to see you. Great it's to see a, you guys. Thank you. It's been a long, you. long time. Yeah. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for doing the events uh, Sunday. We're yeah. doing a You little, didn't even uh, mention the event? No, it sold out, too, so I guess you yeah, out, you're yeah, on to the next thing now. Yeah, uh, quick, uh, we're doing a thing uh, Sunday for the parade, and it benefits Greg Hill Foundation and uh, Dropkicks Foundation. Yeah, the Cladifon. Um, which is the Cladifon. Remember the so. last time you had us at the parade? Um, yes. On we a got float, and we got kicked out. Yeah, we yeah. got kicked out by the police <laughs> midway through. We had at the uh, at WAF, we had Dropkicks on a, uh, a flatbed, and the police asked us to leave for halfway through the St. Yeah. Patrick's Day hey. parade. Any band can finish a parade. A it takes problem. a real band to get kicked out of. Like, <laughs> I think it was your reputation that got us kicked out, but you know, it probably was. <laughs> it happens a lot. All right, Ken Casey, Wiggy, good questions. Yes, we'll be right thank back. You.